All right, guys, so here's what it looks like when it comes in the box. And these are the hardened carrying cases that come with it. And these are really well made. They, you know, they're, like I said, they're hardened. So they're not gonna like squish on you, which is nice. And uh, this smaller one here is where the motor is. So let me just show you what the slider case looks like. All right, so as we open up the lid, there is the slider and it just pulls right out like so. And you can see below it, there's like another compartment. And this is where, and it gives you a little diagram so you know how to put them back in, which is really nice. This is where the support struts are. They're in the bottom there, which is just awesome. So it'll support the unit on a tripod and because it extends so far left and right, double distance, it really needs these supports to ensure that it doesn't sag, you know what I mean? And they're really well made, good design. Also comes with an extra belt and some Allen keys in here. Just a closer look at this strut, you can see how it has like a ball head on the top of it. And on the bottom it has a clamp that's also flexible, you know? So it's very easy to clamp it to the legs of the tripod no matter what position it's in. All right guys, so I got the slider out of the box now and here's what it looks like just to give you a little closer look. I'm looking at it from the end here. You can see how it has that cool angled design. So it's just stronger. And uh, looking at it from the bottom, you can see it has the mounting points. It's got a bunch of them here in the middle. And then on each side, it has the mounting point for that special brace. And then these things come out as well, these legs, which is quite nice. But what's cool about this slider is you don't have to use it with the motor. So first thing I want to do though, I want to bring these legs out and give this thing a little more stability. So we're just going to swing these guys out. So now this thing's pretty stable. Now it has fluid in there, so it's like dampened with fluid. So that's what makes it so smooth. And it also has an adjustment here for the fluid. So it's like some kind of vacuum design, they call it. So if you loosen this up all the way, and you know, just put your hand on the slider so it doesn't slide on the desk, you can actually just push this by hand and it's perfectly smooth. It's not like one of those uh, friction-based sliders where you know, when you slide it, it's like uh, 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 herky-jerky. Like this one's not like that because it has that fluid in there. So it just is like butter and you can actually change the speed of it. Well, it's actually the resistance. You're not changing the speed, it's the resistance. So if you raise the resistance to like three, for example, and now you push it with like X amount of effort, it'll go much slower. So if I just push like, you know, a little bit, it'll go nice and slow, nice and smooth. Uh, again, if I put it back to one and I push with that same effort, it's gonna go a little bit faster, as you can see here. Now, this is also important because uh, when you're in the extreme cold, for an example, the fluid inside is gonna get a little bit thicker, like the viscosity will change, and you might want to lower this if, you know, in the very cold. So another thing worth noting is if you wanna use this in like a gravity-fed scenario. So for example, if I put this up at an angle, you see how it's just sliding on its own? So now if I had a camera there, it would slide a little bit faster for the extra weight. So you can have this mounted at an angle and just use gravity and the dampener to control the speed. So you don't have to get the motor for this. So that's really what I wanted to show you uh, in this section. You don't need the motor to get perfectly smooth slider footage. Now, um, and again, you don't even have to use your hand. If you have it at an angle, gravity will feed it. So you can get some nice swooping pans with just gravity and no motor if you wanted to. Now, if you wanna go uphill, of course, you're gonna to have to hoist it or get the motor uh, for that purpose. Now, one other thing I wanted to show you here is uh, this thing, how it locks. So you can turn this to the right and that will lock the slider down. So now the slider will not move if you try to move it. So this is good for stowing, if you need to stow it you know, for travel and things like that. But you definitely wanna make sure you unlock this when you go to use it because otherwise the motor is gonna be straining or you're gonna be straining if you're trying to move it yourself, you know? So this is the motor unit, as you can see right here. And that's what it looks like. You got a bunch, bunch of buttons on the one side there and on the other side is where the battery goes. Now this is the release lever right here for the battery. So you can take that battery off like so. And that's what it looks like. Now this battery is the Sony NPF 550 style. I also have the larger batteries for the other unit, which I'll show you in a moment. The battery just slides in here like so. It's got two little holes on the one side of the battery there, you can see. So those little holes go into these little pins right here. So it just kind of goes in there and then locks into place. And then again, you have this release lever here to take the battery off. 
if you want to. So that's what that's for. I also just wanted to note here on the side of the motor, you can plug in a PD power source. Two amps is what's required, and then you can run the one motor off of the uh, power supply, which is really convenient, especially if your battery goes dead on you. Now, what's a really cool design is how it has these dual screws. So if you look at it from the top here, you can see you have these dual screws, and it's so easy to turn on and off. This is a really, really slick, intuitive design. You can see here on the top of the slider how it has these two holes, and it has these other holes for the pins. And if you look at the bottom of the motor, you can see the pins and the screws. So it just lines up perfectly for you. So all you gotta do is place that down right there like that. Now it's loose at the moment, of course. And then all you need to do is turn these screws like so. And, and it's just like a matter of doing that or do this to unscrew it. So now if you wanna unscrew it, you just go this way, take it off, screw it on, go this way, and that's it. So now the motor is locked on there. So now we got the motor and the battery on there and I wanna show you how this thing works. The first thing you're gonna to wanna to do is hit the power switch. Actually, you know what I'm gonna do? I just wanna show you this while it's on so I could show it with the overhead rig here. So this button here is the power button. You hold that button to turn the unit on and off. So if you long hold it, it'll turn off. If you hold it, it'll turn on like so. This button here, if you hold long press this button, it'll flash and that will allow you to move the slider manually with the motor on there. That's what this button does. So if you wanna move the slider manually to set a waypoint, for example, you just long press that button and it'll flash. That will disengage the, the motor so you can actually slide this thing manually. I'm just gonna put that back to how it was. Now you have your left and right here. That's just gonna move the slider left, move the slider right. Then up here you have a power meter. Um, that will go green uh, if your battery is pretty full. It'll actually get yellow if the battery starts to get low, just so you know, it'll give you an indicator. The app also will show you the battery life of all your different uh, motors, depending on how many you're using uh, in your system. So another thing that the power button does is it sets the speed and it also sets waypoints. So if you just press the power button once, you could notice those blue dots, that's the speed indicators. Those blue dots are changing. So that's the slowest speed, that's medium speed, that's fast speed. So if you want to set a waypoint, you just double click and that'll set a waypoint. If you want to clear your waypoints, you have to hold left and right at the same time. It'll beep like that. That will clear your waypoints. So now that I just showed you that quickly, let me put this back on and I'll show you how it works in practice. If I double tap on the left directional, the unit is gonna go left, just like so. Now, if I double tap it again, it'll stop. Or I can just press it and it'll go. So if you double tap it, it'll go on its own. Um, if you just press and hold, it'll just go normally. Now, to change the speed, you just hit the power button again, and now it's in slow speed. So you can see how much slower it goes. And then if you double tap, it'll just keep going on its own. So I'm just gonna double tap again. All right, so let's say I wanna set a waypoint right here. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna double tap the power button and you'll hear a beep. Hear that? So now I'm gonna move the slider to a different spot. Let me just change the speed so it's a little faster. And now I'm gonna double tap the power button again to set another waypoint. See that? So you got the double beep. Now, if we want this to loop back and forth between the waypoints, what you gotta do is hit the power button and one of the directional buttons. So I'm just gonna hit the power button and the left button. You hear it beep, and now it's gonna cycle through the, the waypoints from one to the other. And you can change the speed by just tapping the power button. So if you want it to go fast, or you want it to go super buttery smooth and slow, like that. Now guys, you have much more power when you use the app to control this stuff. But I just wanted to show you that if you don't wanna use the app, I don't blame you at all. It sucks using apps and stuff like that. Um, but you do get a lot more power with this slider if you use the app. Now to stop that, you just hit the power button and one of the directions again, and it'll stop. And then again, to clear the waypoints, you just press both left and right, and that clears the waypoints. All right guys, so I did go ahead and buy myself this Pons PT. 
motorized pan head top and this thing goes for about six hundred dollars so i did spend my own money on this because i really wanted to try it i've always wanted one of those pan tilt head units for a slider now zippon did send me this slider so i didn't pay for this slider they sent me the slider and the one motor but that pons pt unit i like i said i bought with my own money just so you're aware now the pons pt comes with a couple of different parts here it's got this bottom plate which you can see here then it has this part here, which goes on top of the bottom plate, and it's pretty heavy. This thing's got like some weight to it. And then there's this part here, which goes on the top. Yeah, just spin it on there, it'll work. All right, so now that we got that tight, make sure you cinch that down nice and tight. Then we can throw this unit on here, and it just threads on right on top of that. like so and also note this battery here this is the larger battery I'll have a link for this below and it has a release button right here similar to the other battery so this is the larger unit as you can see here it says it's the 960 and it's much fatter it'll just give you much more battery life and I got this power extra one on Amazon pretty affordable and that just snaps on just like the other one does. It has the two pins on one side and it just snaps right on there. So this arm came separate like so, but one end just goes in here and you just tighten it. It's very, very simple to do here. And then this guy here, you can see it's got the same notch right here. So that's gonna slide onto this notch like so, and then it's gonna twerk down. So the pan head also comes with a quick release plate I have on the bottom of the camera right there. So this is my A7 IV. So that quick release plate will just slide right into here and it is like an Arca Swiss style. So I'm just gonna slide this on. Now you are gonna wanna try to balance this a little bit, like where you think the center of mass would be. So I'm gonna put it like right about there. I feel like that's about the center of mass you know, as best as it could. I really should take this wrist strap off too, but I'm just gonna put it up top there for now. So that's what this looks like when you have it fully set up, which is pretty sweet, right? So I can turn these guys on, these motors. They have power buttons. All right, guys, so I'm just gonna open the Zipon Lab app here. And if I go, I already have the app open, but if I go back one page here by hitting that arrow on the top left, that'll show you the different equipment that is configured. So you just gotta make sure you have Bluetooth on and you're gonna to wanna to connect your slider if you just have the slider. If you have the pan head also, then you can connect those as well. So also on the top right, there is an option for firmware upgrades. You might have to go in here and do some upgrades. It'll prompt you though. And here we go. So here is what the screen looks like. So um, this is what you got, guys. You got a joystick. You basically got two joysticks. You got the pan and zoom on the left side. And so that's why you have up, down, and left and right. On the right-hand side, the joystick-looking thing with the green circle. As you can see here, I'm moving it, and the slider is moving. You can also do this at the same time. So now I'm going up and sliding, for example. Now I'm panning. And you can also control your speed, for example. So I'm just gonna leave it like right around 46 for now. What's really cool about this is the ability to set the waypoints. And you can see how you have A through F uh, on the top there. So what you're gonna wanna do is you're gonna wanna have your stuff in a position where you wanna start. All right, so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna have the camera set in a specific position here. So I'm gonna aim it at like the monitor that I'm uh, using for reference. So I got it aimed at the monitor right there. So now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna hit the A button on the top left to set that waypoint. And you just tap that. So that's the A waypoint. So now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna slide the slider over, slide it to the left a little bit. Now I'm gonna turn it to the right. I'm gonna square it up right in the middle there where I want it, like so. Perfect. Now I'm gonna hit the B button for the B waypoint. So now I have both waypoints set. So now what you're gonna to wanna to do is, if you want it to go from waypoint to waypoint back and forth nice and smooth, which is what I recommend doing, you're gonna to wanna to hit this button on the bottom left. It looks like two little arrows going in a circle. 
So select that and that will make it so it loops. So this way it loops when it plays. So now I'm gonna hit play and here goes the slider. So now you can see it's gonna go from waypoint A to waypoint B. And it's absolutely incredible how cool this is. The applications that you can use this for are just remarkable. I'll show you some sample footage in a second. Obviously you saw some already, but this is so cool, isn't it? Now if that's too slow for you, what you can do is you can hit stop, then you can drag the speed up, put it at like 100% or wherever you want it, and then hit play again, and now it'll play at a faster speed. So depending on what you want to do, it's just restarting. So it's going to start from the beginning. Now it's going to restart. So it's always going to start from A in your sequence, so keep that in mind. And now it's just going at a faster speed doing the same thing. So I'm just going to hit stop. And then on the top right, there's a little like reset button. It looks like a circle with the arrow. I'm going to press that. And also on the top right, notice how it, it'll show you how long it's going to take for the slider to complete the sequence that you have programmed in, which is another really nice feature. So this time what I'm going to do is I'm going to aim it down. And I'm going to set this. I'm going to go to the right just a little more. I'm going to set this as A. So I just tap the A button there. Then what I'm going to do, I'm going to slide it to the left. Then I'm going to aim it up. And that's as fast as it goes when you're uh, using these joysticks, by the way. You can also use on the pan heads themselves, they have arrows. So I can control it right here with the arrows on the side of the unit also. Same thing with the one on the bottom here. You can do it like either way. So it's nice just doing it with the app though if you have it in your hand already. So I'm going to set this here and that's going to be my B waypoint. So now I have A and B set once again. I have the loop button enabled here on the bottom left. I'm just going to hit the play. And here we go. So now we have a more dramatic amount of movement going on here. It works really good. I mean, it's it's pretty incredible. I'm just going to hit stop, slow the speed down a little bit. All right, so now I have the speed on 5%, and I'm going to hit play. So it's just going to reset back to A point, and now it's going to go nice and slow. So you see how slow this is going? This is the advantage of using the app, because you cannot make it go this slow just using you know the buttons on the unit itself. You have to use the app to get it to go like at this speed. And this is what's so killer about this. I mean, you can get such cinematic, dramatic footage with a unit like this. I mean, gosh, it's incredible, it really is. All right guys, so I have my Manfrotto tripod plate mounted to the bottom of the slider, and I'm just gonna snap that into the top of the ball head there. And I'm just gonna clamp that down nice and tight. And this tripod is pretty strong, so it can support this weight no problem. Now I'm just threading in that strut on the one side, loosening the extension arm. And now I'm just going to clamp it to the bottom of the tripod leg there. And depending on what, how you have your tripod set up, you're going to have to, you know, just figure out where to mount these things. But for this basic setup, um, this is where I'm going to mount them. Now here's the other one, just threading it on there quick. Um, it, it, some, it, sometimes it's easier if you leave the top ball head tight and thread it on that way. And then I'm just clamping this leg down. So now you can see the tripod. It's completely set up, but it's not the sturdiest due to the legs. They're just not wide enough. So you have to keep that in mind. So I wanted to show you it this way just so you know what not to do. I think it would have been fine like that, to be honest, but you definitely want to make sure that you have you know, the weight spread out so there's no way that this unit can flip over. Because when it's fully loaded with a heavy camera and the pan head, you know, it could potentially flip if you go all the way to one side or the other. All right, so now we're in my little uh, setup here where I recorded the frog. So this is what it looks like. I'm just putting on the uh, pan tilt head and I have to set the tripod up nice and wide, nice and low. So there's gonna be no left to right movement. And just gotta set the waypoint. So there's the first waypoint. And now I'm gonna move this over here and I'm gonna just dial it in using the app. I'm also checking the focus on the camera, making sure that it's focused where I want. 
And now I'm just hitting that looping button so it goes back and forth when it loops. So this way it'll, it'll just keep going, it won't stop. And just double checking the focus and hitting play. So there it is. So now we have this awesome complicated movement going on while it's sliding left and right. And let me just show you what this footage looks like. Alright guys, so overall I would say that the Zipon Micro 3 slider system is an excellent value for the dollar. I mean when you compare it to other systems that are available, you have the Rhino out there for example. A lot of people are using that, but that thing's like $2,500. As you saw the setup here, we're looking at about $1,200 approximately, which is what I had total. Just the slider is a lot cheaper, it's like $600 for the slider and the motor. Just the slider without the motor is less than that. So depending on how you build the system, will determine what the cost is. But again, value for dollar, I think this is one of the best options out there for sure. So one negative to this system, however, is the size and weight. Now I got the bigger 700 series, so it does have a larger travel distance, which is awesome. But with that comes the burden of it not fitting in your bag. So it comes with the hard cases and stuff, but the pan head, uh, system, those two extra motors and that angle brace and all that, that system didn't come with like a hardened case. So I have to like put that in my camera bag and it's like awkward and, and it's really heavy, you know, it like has some weight to it. So that is a downside if you're, you know, if you have to lug this stuff out into the field, it's kind of a little bit of a pain, but if you're just going to like a real estate location or product photography, you know, shoot or anything like that, or you just have it set up in your studio, that's kind of a non-issue. But again, if you're traveling with it and you're trying to get like, you know, on the trail mountain bike footage or whatever you're doing, you know, you have to factor that in because this thing is really heavy uh, with the complete system. And you also are going to want a sturdy tripod like that Manfrotto unit I have at the very least, um, if not like a video tripod pod with like you know the beefier legs so just keep that in mind as well so one other issue i had was um twice the app like wasn't connecting to the uh equipment it just like wouldn't come up you know what i mean so all i did was close the app and reopen it and then it acquired the equipment so that was a little bit of a negative but I'm, you're, I'm so used to apps being finicky like over the years that honestly this one works pretty good. The only other thing was occasionally if I tried to drag the speed slider it like wouldn't work so I'd have to like touch it a few times. So overall the app worked great and honestly all I need it for is setting the slider speed and setting the waypoints pretty much and then also knowing how long the whole sequence is going to take with that you know with the timer on the top there which is very convenient. The app does offer a ton of other features. It has like time lapse and all this other stuff, uh, panorama mode and stuff like that. But those features require, you know, a shutter release cable and or the Zippon trigger mechanism that goes into the hot shoe of the camera. And then that will communicate you know, when the shutter is, you know, active and stuff like that. So it gets a little bit complicated and I don't have those accessories. So I wasn't able to test those more advanced app features, but you know, in the future, perhaps I definitely plan on using this unit for future videos because it is unbelievable for product photography and stuff. So lenses, cameras, things like that. I definitely want to use this for future videos. So, all right guys, so links below the video. I appreciate your support and please have a wonderful day. Okay. I'll catch up with you next time. Take care.